Hello, everybody, and welcome to Living Well with Dr. Sheila. This show can be seen on several streaming channels, Roku TV, Google TV, Amazon Fire TV. You can listen to the audio on Chromecast and several other ways to look at this. We are part of KP Media, and this is the SCW channel. Today, we're going to talk to someone about a little bit more on our health topic. We've been going uh, back and forth. So we've been talking about mental health and relationships and physical health. And so today we're going to talk about uh, living a little better and ways that we can do that. So our guest today is Shauna Robbins, and she is the best-selling author of two books, Powerful Sleep, Rest Deeply, Repair Your Brain and Restore Your Life, and Irresistibly Healthy, Simple Strategies to Feel Vibrant, Alive, Healthy, and Full of Energy Again. Her signature program, Irresistibly Healthy, is an online wellness program for women who want to reset their habits and change their lives. In her early 30s, Shauna was diagnosed with cancer. After her recovery, she embarked on a journey of healing through education, research, and self-discovery. She now shares her deep knowledge of disease prevention and healing with others. Shauna is a National Board Certified Health and Wellness Coach, a graduate of the Institute of Integrative Nutrition and the CEO of Kaya, and she can tell me how to say that correctly, health and wellness. Just like a personal trainer at the gym, Shauna Roberts Robbins is a supportive coach who will push and challenge her clients to become the best, best version of themselves. She has been featured on several podcasts and in Authority Magazine, Thrive Global, and the Huffington Post. She enjoys taking sunset beach watches, my kind of girl, hiking in nature with friends, and cooking at home with family. Let's go ahead and welcome Shauna to the studio. Hello Hi, there. Hi, how are you? So good. I'm good. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we got a little bit of a snippet of you from the intro, but can you tell us tell us a little bit more about yourself? Tell us about your background. Well, uh, I'm a mother of three, and I, in my previous life, I was a broadcast journalist. So I did the evening news. I was also an investigative reporter. And um, in my early 30s, I was diagnosed with melanoma, and that was something that really upended my life. I, um, I have no family history of melanoma. I always thought I took good care of myself and the sun, so that was something that um, really shook me upside down. And the idea of my children growing up without a mother was something that was so um, fear inducing in me that I began my search to try to figure out what I could do to not only heal my cancer, but to make sure that it never reoccurred again. And so that set me on the path to nutrition school, to become a health and wellness coach, and to really understand the power of not only diet and nutrition, but lifestyle changes that could help your body um, heal an illness and also prevent an illness from happening in the first place. So that's what my second book is about. My first book is about the power of sleep and how important it is for brain health. Um, my dad was diagnosed with Alzheimer's and he was able to fight it for 12 years, which was really, really amazing with diet and lifestyle changes um, to help really restore his brain and to, um, you know, help him to regenerate his brain tissue. So that's my first book as well. So everything is about everything about me and my path and my journey has really been you know, through struggling um, with chronic illness, not only, you know, myself, but in my family and using food and nutrition and lifestyle choices as a way, as a healing modality. Um, and I've really seen it work firsthand. And so now I share that with my clients. Really interesting. So um, for the average person, what is um, what is something that they can just even begin to do or even start to think of to make these uh, choices that you're talking about? 
So the lifestyle changes that need to happen are not drastic ones. People need to understand that it's not about overhauling your whole life. It's about just making small changes that over time have a huge impact in their life direction and in their health and in their wellness. So it's utilizing something called the butterfly effect, which is the idea that if a butterfly, I think the theory is if a butterfly flaps its wings in Tokyo, it creates a hurricane in Toronto. And so by making small little changes in your daily life, that could be maybe exercising, you know, one extra day a week. That could be swapping out more plants on your plate instead of rice and carbs. Maybe just having an extra, you know, serving of vegetables. Using, you know, drinking more water, even if you have to put fruit in your water, or put some lemon or some lime in your water instead of having soda. You know, these are all just small little changes that you can make that over time have a huge impact on your health and wellness in a positive direction. That's um, good to know because I think a lot of people believe that um, in order to improve your health, especially if you have a health issue, um, mm -hmm. that there has to be such a drastic overhaul mm -hmm. almost of your life and it becomes uh, that they don't even know where to start. You almost get paralyzed Yep, <laughs> because you're like, I, I don't know where to start. There is so much uh, that I can do. Um, or that I should do, because you get general information, but not specific, kind of. Right. And it's easier when you have specific healthy swaps. That's what I teach people is like, OK, it's a negative feedback system. Ba basically having unhealthy choices, whether you're craving sugar or carbs or soda or drinking too much alcohol or not exercising or smoking, whatever it is, you just have to interrupt the cycle in one spot. And I always tell them to pick the easiest spot. What's something easy for you that's a bad habit that you can level up? So maybe that habit is just drinking more water. And naturally, when you consume more water and you're more hydrated, you sleep better, you have more energy, you have less headaches, you have less constipation, you have all these things that that one change will positively affect. And then it's like, well, maybe you don't need the afternoon coffee now because You've had water throughout the day and you feel better and you slept better the night before. So you don't need the coffee to keep you awake. So then that habit naturally dissipates. And all of a sudden now you have a healthier habit, which is consuming more water. And now you're losing weight because you're drinking more water. So your body's letting go of the fluids it was holding on to before. And now you're exercising because you feel better. And so it creates this positive feedback loop by making one small change, which is consuming more water in your day. And that sounds pretty, it sounds easy. It is. It is. It, yeah. It, it, uh, but I, I will say, because I um, I switched my diet probably about two, two months ago or so. And I switched it because I was a tea drinker. Mm. Iced tea, hot tea. I just really love tea. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, well, um, and one of the parts of the diet change was to drink one cup loose leaf organic tea in the morning and call it for the day uh -huh. that was and drink the rest of it as water uh -huh. that was a lot harder than i thought it was going to be mm -hmm. i drank water but i drank water and i would put um lemon in it because i was a lemon fan and i um found out i shouldn't really even have lemon because i had a uh, allergy test mm -hmm. so uh <laughs> i was it was it was it was a, a challenge so, so I, I think that's a little radical. I do. That's a radical change, I think. I think if you are drinking five or six cups of tea during the day, I think maybe you start by having four cups of tea, right? And then the yeah. following week you have three cups of tea. And then the following week you have two cups of tea. I mean, if your goal is only to have one, but it takes a few weeks of slowly finding, and maybe the water for you needs to have strawberries in it, or maybe the water needs to have watermelon in it, or another flavor that you like that's not a citrus that won't irritate you. Maybe it's tangerine, or maybe it's, you know, something else. Um, and finding that, playing around with different types of fruit. It could be raspberries. You could put raspberries in your water. It's like, pick what you like. You know, pick mm -hmm. what makes you feel good. But I definitely like that seems really when people give up coffee, they're like, how do I do it? I have four cups now. And I'm like, you do it very slowly mm -hmm. and you do it over time. This is not a race, right? You want to create healthy habits that stick long term. 
So you need to be able to crowd out the bad habits with healthier habits that make you feel really good that you're naturally going to crave and that you're going to enjoy. Because it's not about deprivation. That never works. Diets never work because deprivation doesn't work. Not in the long term. It does no. not. No. Yeah. Yeah. And this is about making long term changes that, you know, really impact your health in a positive way. Yeah. And I, I did bring that up because I know there are other people that are like me. Now, I mean, I did it. I just do the one, you know, cup. I mean, I, I did it. But it was um, it was a challenge. It was a challenge. But I just I'm just one of those where, OK, well, if you tell me this, if it makes sense, mm -hmm. <laughs> then I'll do it. If it doesn't make sense, not, you know, you have to convince me. But that kind of did make a little bit of sense for uh, what I was going for. So. But yeah, it's it's not so much a race. It's, it's not. Mm -hmm, yeah. So and you talked about um, water and increasing water. What other um, uh, low hanging fruit changes can a person make in order to improve their health? So I think eating more plants is a really big one. You know, anything green, anything that grows from the ground, any kind of vegetables. When you are sitting down to have a meal, hopefully, typically you would have, you know, a size of protein that would fit in the palm of your hand and there would be some sort of carbs and there would be ideally some sort of vegetables if you can have that. So I tell my clients, pick a meal that breakfast, lunch or dinner and make that a plant meal where you don't have the rice, you don't have the potatoes, you don't have the bread and take a double helping of vegetables so that you have three quarters of your plate are vegetables and then the rest is a protein. So that um, is a really good way to get, you know, to kind of limit and or lower your carb intake, your sugar intake, mm -hmm. carb and carbs are converted into sugar in the body. Mm -hmm. And just to have more vegetables. And when you have more vegetables, you have more nutrients, you have more fiber, you have all sorts of amazing things for your body um, that you wouldn't otherwise have. And so, the other thing I tell my clients is that um, smoothies are a great way to get vegetables in your body. And they don't really think of smoothies. Most people think of smoothies as fruit based, which they can. You can certainly use a handful of fruit in them. But I love playing around and encouraging people to play around with different kinds of greens, spinach, arugula, um, kale, whatever they like, any kind of greens and make that the primary amount of the smoothie. And then Add some avocado in it to make the smoothie really rich and creamy so it tastes like a milkshake. Because if it tastes like a milkshake, you're going to want it and you're going to want to drink it and you're going to want to make it more often. And then if you want to add some fruit or some nuts into your smoothie, great. And then you have this complete meal that's full of healthy plants and um, add some protein powder and you're good to go. Wow. And that actually sounded like a good recipe. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's all about just keeping it simple. It's not complicated. And when people ask me portion sizes, I just say, your hand, <laughs> put it in your hand, put it in, right? Put it in your hand, put it on the plate. Like it should fit in your hand. So men, of course, need more than women. They're bigger. Their bodies are bigger. Their muscle mass is more. They're, they, you know, so it's like, how much steak should I have? How much chicken should I have? I'm like, your hand, <laughs> use it as a guideline. Mm hmm. That's Simple. a really good tip. Yeah, that's a that's actually a really good tip. That's yeah, especially for the protein, because yeah. I think, yeah, a lot of us eat um, a lot more than we need. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. So why? Um, and we talked about some of these healthy swaps and we're going to get into because uh, we're going to talk a little bit about sleep later, because that is one of your books. And that is just a whole nother topic. We're going to, kinda, you know, separate these two because that sleep is, a, my goodness. Yeah, we can spend an hour just on sleep. I was going to say, yeah, sleep is, is really, <laughs> yeah, I've done a couple, I actually have done a couple of shows on sleep because it's just, it's really a problem for a lot of people That's right. or concern it, for a lot it, of people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about the healthy uh, swaps, so we talked about uh, water, and we talked about nutrition and, and maybe cutting out some of the carbs. But um, can you talk briefly, too, about the role of, because you mentioned exercise. Mm -hmm. So the role of exercise in this whole um, uh, uh, situation of healthy living. So exercise is one of the best things that you can do for your sleep. 
And a lot of people don't realize that. Um, but exercise is a great way. So a lot of people don't sleep because they have a lot of stress during the day and they don't have any stress management skills to deal with the stress that they feel. And so when your body stays in this heightened fight or flight response, which happens when you're under chronic stress, you, at night, your cortisol levels are supposed to drop. Cortisol is what you make when you're in fight or flight. And your melatonin levels, which is what you need to fall asleep, are supposed to rise. But if your body stays in this state of chronic stress with cortisol, that dance doesn't happen. So you don't get the melatonin and you can't fall asleep or you fall asleep for a little bit, but you wake up in the middle of the night and your head is racing and you can't get back to sleep. Those are all signs that your stress has gotten to a point where you need a stress management skill. So exercise is one of the best stress management techniques that you have. And my, you know, my clients always ask me, well, what's your favorite type of, of exercise? And I always answer the same way. Whatever you like, is the best form of exercise because you need to do it five days a week. And this is not about how you look. This is not about your weight. This is not about fitting into a pair of skinny jeans. This is not about vanity. This is about wellness and longevity and disease prevention. Um, because sleep does so many incredible things for your body. When you're resting, your blood pressure naturally drops. So your heart valves and your and your arteries can actually be repaired by the body. Your brain has this self-cleaning switch. I call it like a self-cleaning oven. If you can imagine those old switches, you know, that used to be in the oven, the brain will actually go in and clean itself and regenerate tissue and store memories and get rid of any kind of viruses or bacteria or whatever that have come into your brain throughout the day through your mouth or your nose, or your ears, your eyes. So your brain needs this. Your REM cycles that you have at night are really restorative for your muscles. Your body is rebuilding tissue. Um, it's Sleep is a very active time for the body to rejuvenate and rest and repair itself. And so during the day, if you can get daytime exercise, so you don't want to exercise too close to bed because that could also interfere with your sleep. But if you can get 30 to 45 minutes of like sweaty, out of breath exercise, whatever that is, if that's with weights, if that's dancing, if that's walking your dog, it doesn't matter. You just need to do it and you need to do it, you know, four to five days a week. That will go such a long way at offering your body the ability to not only lower your stress, but to have more sleep at night because your muscles will be tired. And when you exercise, you're breathing in more oxygen. So you're oxygenating your body, which is amazing for it. So, you know, exercise. And then if you can exercise with a friend, that's even better because that even lowers your stress even more because you're connecting, you're bonding, especially for women. Um, women really have a lot of community mindedness in their biology. Mm -hmm. And so if you can connect together with a girlfriend or a sister or whoever, and exercise, that's even more of a stress reduction technique. So, um, you know, I think exercise is one of the greatest gifts you can give yourself. And again, it's not a vanity thing. It's a health and wellness thing. Agreed. I spent, I am a, what, 20, oh my goodness, time flies, 25 year exercise, uh, aerobic trainer, Great. personal trainer. Great. Pilates instructor. Do you know? I do know. Yeah, I do know the value and um, just how important exercise is. Um, and for me, uh, well, the motivation was because I taught, but um, exercise can be really, really difficult if you can't find what you like right. to stick to. That's the one thing about it. You have to find something that you really like. And it could be as simple as fast walking, walking, right. whatever, um, right. just to be able to get your body moving. And um, like you say, sweat, get your blood pumping, get your heart pumping, you right. know, and it's so beneficial, yep. so beneficial. On so many levels. Yeah. Even yeah. walking up the stairs, you know, I even walking to the grocery store now, I force myself to not drive. I force myself to walk to the grocery store and then I have to carry the heavy bags. I can only buy so much, right? Because I can only carry, but then it's a weight bearing exercise because I have to carry the bags home. And I started it during COVID and it's just been such a great habit for me to really make the effort to walk to the store and walk home and carry, you know, the milk and everything back that mm -hmm. it weighs. So it's, I get an upper body workout when I'm walking. So it's, yeah. you know, it's something so simple as that. 
makes a really big difference. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah. They're, and it's always all those uh, little tips park, you know, your car in the parking lot far away from the door and, you know, mm -hmm. always try to take the stairs, just little things. Because I know we both uh, have mentioned exercising in longer stretches. Right. But it's also just a matter of even changing that uh, to a healthier uh, lifestyle with more energy expenditure. Right. So even, <laughs> you know, the walking and, and um walking from your car to the door and making it further than it finding that space and waiting for that space close to the door, which right. you see so many people do like they'll wait 10 minutes right? You know, when they could have parked and really just walked in. And a lot of it is because the bags are heavy and they have a bunch of bags and they don't want to carry them all. But I always challenge people to consider buying less shopping more often if you can make the time and then you know, that's the sort of the European way of living and then walk, yeah. you can carry. And so it's good for your muscles and it's good for your body and it gets you out. And it's sometimes it's just a lovely thing to do when you've been inside all day working, sitting. It's a nice right. way to kind of mix up your life. And again, these are all just lifestyle changes, small little changes. And you don't have to do it every time, but it's just small changes that over time make a big difference. Yeah. And as you do these small changes, sometimes they become habit. Well, hopefully that's the goal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's hopefully. Yeah. Sometimes they become. Yeah. That is the goal, because even if you um, and, you know, it's the same when you're trying to change uh, your habits for anything, mm -hmm. uh, at least if you are one of those people who you know you're supposed to park further out and walk in when you're sitting there waiting for a spot you know at least it across your mind you know i really should move down there and just park and walk so you know at least it start putting it in your mind so that it's more um becomes more of a thought process and so I, love, you know I love that you just brought that up because i think that's one of the biggest issues that i see with people when they're creating healthier habits for themselves is that they have they really struggle with showing up for them they really struggle with knowing what's right for them and then doing it. So a lot of my clients are like, oh, I don't have time to exercise. I work, uh, I have a family, I'm busy, I, you know? And it's like really finding that time in the day and really finding that mindset, it's a mindset shift where you are actually putting yourself at the top of the list. You know, the priority list is always about everybody else. When is it about you? And so showing up for yourself and making that commitment is one of the most important things you can do for your overall health and wellness. Mm -hmm. So true. Mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, making that shift has to go back actually to the statement you just made that you have to think about making yourself a priority, right. at least for some part of the day. Those of, you know, we, if you have children, you have a family, yes, the obligation and work, right? Yes, right. The obligation is there but the obligation also should be partially to yourself. That's right. Yeah. And if we can't get there, that's probably part A of the, the whole program. That's right. That's yeah. right. And that's what led me to cancer. I was such a martyr mom. My kids got everything. My boss got everything. My coworkers, I was always picking up projects that they couldn't manage. Oh, can you help me with this? Oh, can you do this? My dad got sick. I was caretaking him. So, you know, I'm split between all these different priorities. And, and I felt like there was never enough time for me. And so I was eating leftover macaroni and cheese and I was not exercising. And I was, you know, I, I just I wasn't going. I was so exhausted all the time, but I would get in bed. I couldn't fall asleep. So mm -hmm. I was drinking too much wine at night, trying to get myself to relax. I had just every bad habit that you could name I had. And, but the biggest struggle for me and what cancer really taught me was if I don't show up for me, nobody else is going to show up for me. And if I don't put myself on the list, I mean, no one else is going to do it. I have to prioritize my health and wellness. I have to use boundaries. I have to be able to say no without feeling guilty, without feeling horrible. I have to be able to ask for help and, and, and outsource things, not only just to my children, you know, with chores and, you know, being helpful, but also asking neighbors and friends and, and asking my siblings to caretake my parents so that I could have a break so that I could do what I needed to do for me. And that was a whole you know, change not only in my personality, but in my mindset of being able to 
really put myself on the list and use these these skills that I didn't really have. I didn't have the ability to put down boundaries before I got cancer. And so when it tore, you know, turned my world upside down, what it really did was make me have to say, wait, if I'm going to survive this, something's got to change in me where I really need to advocate for myself in my life and make room in my life for me to take care of myself. Wow. Yeah. And I think um, many people who have um, life changing diagnoses mm -hmm. um, come to that conclusion. But we we because I, you know, I, I do some a, a little bit of work, too, for health and wellness. Um, we want to catch people before it gets there. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. And that's yeah. what I hope about coming on the show and talking to you and, and sharing my story is getting people before they get sick, getting yes. people before the illness. Because there are, you know, by focusing on nutrition, sleep, um, stress reduction, and exercise, those are the four pillars that can really help you stay away from the path of illness and disease. And so mm -hmm. if you can create healthier lifestyle choices within those four categories, disease prevention becomes an easy thing to do. And even if you have it in the family, even if it's something that you're genetically predisposed to, your genes do not decide your fate. Your lifestyle is what decides your fate. And a lot of people don't realize that. Right, right. Well, that, that's also, um, a, a lot of people don't realize it uh, number one, because you're not taught, even your, a lot of people don't have um, conversations with their physicians. You know, you don't really have time to really talk about um, different questions you might have, or even questions like that, because that's an off topic kind of discussion uh, when you're going to your doctor. But um, people do default, especially people whose parents or relatives or whatever say they have a history of uh, uh well, obesity or whatever, they'll default to, you know, well, that's kind of in my family mm -hmm. and genetics. No, no, it, it really, they can really be, um, I won't say altered, but the result of what your genetic composition is can be um, changed to your benefit. Absolutely. Science has proven that for epigenetics, that you can literally turn on and off your genes through your lifestyle choices. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Dr. Mark Hyman is a, is a functional medicine doctor, and he always says that genetics loads the gun, but lifestyle pulls the trigger. And that's mm -hmm. really, really powerful for people to learn because it, it makes them feel empowered that they can make a difference just because they have cancer in the family or they have heart disease in the family or, you know, like you said, obesity or diabetes. It doesn't have to be that way for them. They can yeah. make changes starting today that can alter their genes in a positive way. And, you know, it's up to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I love that there's so much uh, research coming out in recent years, because you can think 20 years ago, this conversation, the conversation that we're having probably wouldn't even have happened. Uh, more people are more aware of lifestyle changes and uh, just living better. Right. And the impact that it takes on uh, your life, your longevity, how well you live and how well you age. And that's really the conversation that needs to be had. And I'm really glad you brought that up because we all know we're going to die. We're all here for a short period of time. So this is not about living, you know, a year, live 100 years. Who knows? But it's about the quality of life that you have while you're here. Being able to do the things that you want to do, whether that's play with your grandkids, whether that's traveling, having adventures, you know, I, whatever it is, feeling really vibrant, having a lot of energy, being able to have a clear mind and not have dementia or Parkinson's or have brain fog or, you know, whatever that is for you, those are your goals. And those are things that you need to work towards because um, for some people, it's just not to wake up every day in chronic pain. And being able to get off medications that have bad side effects that they hate. You know, there's all sorts of reasons why people want to be healthier. And I think all those reasons are important. And it's all about the quality of life that we have now while we're living. Agreed. Yeah. 
so one of the questions that I wanted to ask was, uh, so we've had a, a great conversation on lifestyle changes um, and just small changes that you can make to improve your health. Mm-hmm. But why do you think it's so hard then for people to make these changes or to, um, you know, start pulling the trigger um, to protect their health? Because I think they think it's bigger than it needs to be. I think most people think that you have to overhaul everything and that's going to shake up the family. That's going to shake up your relationship with your partner. That's going to shake up your relationships with your girlfriends that maybe just want to, you know, go out to dinner or drink wine or whatever. And you say, well, now I can't do that. Or now I, I can't do this or I can't do that. Right. There's this idea of deprivation. And so what I teach with the butterfly effect, making these small but powerful changes over time, it's really about creating a healthy habit that is easy for you, that doesn't upend your life, like putting an extra helping of salad on your plate, right? Instead of having rice and carbs, things that aren't going to upend the family, things that aren't going to change your relationship with your partner, you know, things that aren't going to make you restricted in some way. And then over time, Pretty soon, everybody's getting a second helping, right? Everybody is, you know, taking a walk after dinner to walk the dog with the family. It's not just you doing it anymore and being resentful because you're the only person who walks the dog. Now everybody is walking the dog together, right? And so it's like making these changes together. Maybe it's have meeting up with your friends and having one margarita instead of three or one glass of wine instead of three or four, you know? and um, it's just, you know, and then, and then over time, then you sleep better then you feel better Then everybody. See, everybody's like, wow, your skin looks better. Wow. You know, you're doing better at work. You're making more money. Like all of these things start to change in your life. And, um, for, especially for women, they find that once they start sleeping better, it's a miracle. They have their sex drive back. Well, then the relationship with their partner gets better. And then everything, you know, it's like, it's just this positive cascade of things. And I know I found when I really made the decision to step, to really show up for myself and start to say no to people like, no, I can't take on that responsibility. No, I can't do that for the school. No, I can't do that for my work. Um, because I need to make time to get in bed earlier. I need to make time to exercise in the morning. You know, I need to not be the primary person cooking all the time. I, I need my partner to help me out by doing the grocery shopping and coming home from work and cooking meals so that I could go lay down and do a meditation or take a warm bath or whatever it was. All of a sudden I became happier and then everybody around me became happier. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. then my lifestyle choices just became easier because it benefited yeah. everybody around me. And so it yeah. didn't feel hard and it didn't feel like work. And now I have a life where I show up for myself and I sleep well and I feel really great and I'm happy. And it's like the, the whole oxygen mask, you know, you put your os- oxygen mask on first when you're flying before you put anybody else's on. It's such a cliched story, but it's so true that if you don't take care of you, you can't, take care of anybody else. Yeah, so true, so true. So on that note, we're gonna come back in just 30 seconds, but we're gonna take a quick commercial break and we will be right back. CG Meals helps you save time with our health conscious fresh food kits delivered straight to your door. Fast, fresh food, ready to eat in just 8 to 10 minutes. Now you can focus on what's really important. Order your meal kit today at cgmeals.com. Every time I see that commercial, I'm like that's that looks like some delicious food right there. And you know what I loved about that commercial was not only did she serve different things, right? Because people need to be able to have a, every person's body is bio-individual. So some people need meat. Some people don't need meat. Some people need, you know, to have carbs. 
some people can't have carbs at all, or it just throws their blood sugar through the roof. So it's like really being able to eat the way that feels good to your body is really important. And in a family situation, sometimes that's hard because mm -hmm. you want to just make one meal and be done. But I love the fact that they actually showed different things. It wasn't just, and, and the portion sizes of that meal were quite small for a family of four. So that was the other thing that I was like, huh, interesting, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Commercial. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and you, that you're the first person that's brought that up. So yeah, I do like that. Yeah, the fact that she had uh, choices because mm -hmm. yeah. there were four of them. So that's yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah really good and point. I, and I appreciate the fact that the husband brought the kids home so that she could have some time at home. And and she didn't plan and cook and chop and prep, and she just got to heat up a meal and great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so, yeah, that actually fits into everything that we just talked about. <laughs> For the first half hour, we, you know, we really did. Yeah. The, That's yeah. Right. That's wow. right. Yeah. Wow. So, um, and you talked about this for uh, uh, just a, a minute, but I always like to revisit specific questions that we um, want to make sure are answered. So um, what can, I'll say I, so what can I do Say, for example, I have changed and um, I'll just use an example. I uh, don't want to eat meat anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's just an example. It could be anything. I, you know, I'm changing my diet because I'm not eating carbs or whatever. You can substitute um, whatever you want. But my the rest of my family is like, uh, that's no, <laughs> no, that's not me. I'm, I'm not interested. Right. What um, tips do you have for that? So that actually happened in my own family. So I can speak from experience on that. I have a son who's 20 and he has like a carnivore diet like I've never seen. And he requires a ton of protein and he loves animal protein. And it's a force to get him to eat anything vegetable related. He just wants a plate of meat all the time. It's either like seven eggs for breakfast and then a plate of meat for lunch and a plate of, you know, tri-tip for dinner. And it's, um, it's incredibly frustrating for me because his, but his body craves what he craves. And he does actually really, really well on this super high protein diet. So, um, but the rest of us really do better on a more plant-based diet. So what I do, um, understanding the fact that everybody's body is different and everybody has different needs, is try to be respectful, um, given he's 20 now, right? So he can take cooking and shopping into his own hands, of which I delegate to him. Look, honey, I understand that this feels really good to you. Um, so why don't you go ahead and swing by the grocery store when you're coming home from work and pick up what looks good, bring it home, um, pop it on the grill, and come sit down and eat with us. And I do the same for my husband. You know, it's like, if you're looking to have some meat tonight, why don't you swing by the grocery store on the way home from work and grab what looks good to you and bring it home? I'm making something else for our daughters and for myself. Um, but we, you know, go ahead and uh, and do what you need to do for you. And, you know, we all eat different things and we all have different bodies and we all have different metabolisms and we all have different, you know, lifestyles. So um, there's enough space for everybody. It's just that I don't want it to fall on me. Right there. I have to mm -hmm. use that delegating again. I have to use those boundaries again and say, you know, I respect that this is what feels good to you, but it's not what feels good to me. And I have some clients that actually they, you know, they're intermittent fast, so they don't eat breakfast. And so they don't eat until 11 or 12. And then they might have a late lunch at three or four o'clock and then no dinner at all. Um, especially my older clients that are, you know, in their 60s and 70s. There's no interest in having any dinner. They like to sit down. They might have a glass of wine and maybe nibble on some fresh veggies and some hummus, but they're not hungry for dinner. So I always tell people it's really important just to listen to your body. And intuitively, your body will tell you what you need to do. And you just need to do it. And there needs to be enough, you know, respect uh, in a partnership or in a family for you to be able to follow your way of eating that feels really good to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that made, yeah, that was a good answer. I'm glad that I went back and revisited that question because you did kind of answer before with, uh, when you were talking about if your friends want to go out and have wine and you're not having wine and you can have one glass. So you did kind of answer it, yeah. but it's like, ah, let me just see if I can delve in and get it, uh, it from a different perspective. So that actually was uh, good. And it was a good that you used your example of your family because 
that's yeah. probably common. Yeah, because if I told everybody that we were going vegan, I mean, first of all, it wouldn't work for everybody. And second of all, I mean, it's it's just not just because that might be something that I feel really strongly about. And I'm not, by the way, vegan. But if that's something I feel strongly about, that is what is right and feels good to me. But to then enforce that on others um, is really challenging because nobody has everybody's body is bioidentical and you really need to honor what works for you. That's why diets don't work. Um, because a diet is something that's generalized for a bunch of different people. And some people are going to lose 20 pounds and other people are going to break out in hives and lose their hair and not be able to sleep and gain weight. Like I have people that say, Oh, should I be on the keto diet? You know, the ketogenic diet, cause it's all the rage. And I'm like, well, it's a high fat, high protein diet. Have you tried that before? No, I don't know. I'm like, well then try it. See if it works for you, but don't expect just because it worked for your neighbor or your sister or your friend who lost 20 or 30 pounds doesn't mean that that's going to happen for you. You really have to find the way of eating that makes you feel really vibrant, really alive, full of energy, sleep really well, and um, just feel really good inside your body. That's your way of eating. And sometimes it takes a little bit of time to find that. You kind of have to try different types. And so for me, I actually... I don't follow one type of eating. I kind of blend the mm -hmm. things that I like from different types of diets mm -hmm. that really work for me. And I kind of have created my own, but it's, it's taken a while to get to that point. Right. And you have, um, you're a certified nutrition. Yeah. Let me get it right. Yeah. So you, yeah. So you do have a little more knowledge too, um, than the average person on what, you know, what to even try for that matter, because people tend to try whatever fad you can Google. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Or something they hear from a friend that's working well, really true. well for their friend, right? That's that was true. the whole, you know, South Beach. Oh my God, South Beach is amazing. Or then it was, you know, like all the different fad diets that go around. Sure, you can try it. But um, I remember in college, everybody was drinking slim fast. So I was like, great, I'm going to drink slim fast. And then my face is breaking out and, you know, my cycle got, it's, this was awful. It was awful for me, but I just kept doing it because everybody else was doing it. And I didn't understand why I wasn't having the results that other people were having. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Drinking processed little shakes for, you know, and skipping meals. Yeah. Um, and then I had hypoglycemia because of that. So it was like, <laughs> It was so stupid that I was just sort of following along instead of doing what I know makes me feel good. Right, right. Yeah, <laughs> really good example. <laughs> because w when you um, became hypo, guys, is that when you stopped it, did you keep going? No, I kept uh, going. And I didn't understand why I was shaking and, you know, seeing spots <laughs> and getting dizzy. And I didn't know what was wrong with me. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what was yeah. wrong with me was that I was skipping meals and drinking these little sugar shakes, which is just right. the dumbest thing in the world. But um, mm -hmm. I didn't put that together. So I just figured, well, if it works for everybody else, it'll work for me. So. I love that. Yeah, I love that. Because that is really the thought processes that a lot of people have. Right. Yeah. Right. So let's um, shift. I mean, we could actually have talked about this for the whole hour, mm -hmm. but I do want to shift a little bit to sleep. <laughs> we have about 15 minutes, but we're right. going to see what we can fit in okay. about right. sleep uh, in that time. So what I would like for you um, to talk about a little bit is why do number one women have more sleep issues mm -hmm. and why do women have more sleep issues as they age? Okay. Those are great questions. I love those questions. All right. The first one, why do women have more sleep issues? So it stems from the fact that women carry more stress than men because women typically are the ones that carry the emotional stress of both the home and the work. And women also carry more physical stress because they do more chores. They do more cooking. They do more, you know, physical things that require um, stress that, uh, and what makes it stressful is that it never ends, right? It never ends. We never get a break. Seven days a week, we are, you know, dealing with physical stress and emotional stress. So without a proper stress management technique, and when I say that, what I'm referring to is exercise, 
meditation, connecting with friends, gratitude journaling, working in the garden. You know, working in the garden is a big thing for women. Being outside, being in nature, being alone. A lot of the time, women are just never alone, right? It's like just having some time. Maybe that's a warm bath in the bathroom with the door locked and your book or some music. You know, just time to decompress every day. It's really hard to sleep at night because, like I said, you get that fight or flight response that you're under all the time. Your cortisol levels stay high. If your cortisol right. levels stay high, you can't make melatonin. So, you need to be able to find a way to bring those cortisol levels down. And the best way to do that is to find some sort of stress management technique that you can do seven days a week. And if it's exercise, okay, maybe that's five days a week, but maybe the other two days you swap in, you know, reading a good book um, or taking a bath or, you know, meeting up with friends, whatever that is that um, allows your stress level to come down will really help you to sleep at night. So I always say that sleep habits actually start during the day, not at night. So if you want to set yourself up for healthy sleep at night, you make better habits during the day. So health and nutrition is one. You want to eat whole real foods. You don't want to eat processed foods. You don't want to eat. You don't want to drink soda all day. You don't want to drink coffee after 12. You don't want to be eating chocolate. You know, at four o'clock, it has caffeine in it. A lot of people don't realize that chocolate has caffeine. Um, and so and also so that's the first thing is managing your stress. The second thing for women is understanding that alcohol actually plays a negative part in your sleep. Alcohol will help relax you, but it will actually interfere with your sleep cycles, not only because it's loaded with sugar, so you're going to have a blood sugar drop in the middle of the night, which is going to wake you up, but it's a diuretic that's going to make you have to use the bathroom in the middle of the night, and alcohol will interfere with your REM cycles, and your REM cycles where your body actually restores and repairs itself. And so we use alcohol as a stress management tool, right? Like, oh, I've had such a long day. I just want to have a glass of wine. And then it ends up being two or three or four. And then before you know it, that impacts your sleep. And so the next day you're exhausted. You wake up, you don't feel refreshed, you feel tired. And then you're using coffee and sugar and carbs throughout the day to give yourself energy to then only have more alcohol when you get home right? Because you haven't done anything else to manage the stress. So the stress is the underlying issue of why women don't sleep well. So that has to be tackled. And then you have to look at the, the unhealthy habits that you're using in your life. Um, and then those have to be tackled. So what can you do instead of having a second or third or fourth glass of wine? Can you, like I say, take a warm bath? Can you write in a gratitude journal all the wonderful things that happened to you today? Can you connect with your partner and watch a movie or snuggle on the couch or snuggle with a pet or can you you know maybe do some yoga or do some deep breathing or meditation to really help you to you know let go of the day in a healthier way mm -hmm. so that's the first thing um so the other thing which is kind of the elephant in the living room are hormones a lot of women have hot flashes in the middle of the night I'm one of them. It's the worst. You wake up. Yeah. You're sweating through your sheets. You're, you know, it's like, how are you supposed to go back to sleep after that happens? You know, you're, you're wet. It's uncomfortable. And so again, alcohol, especially wine plays a really bad part in having hot flashes. So the more you can restrict your alcohol consumption in, at night, the better off you are with your hormones and, and the better off you'll be able to sleep all night. Um, and that also goes back to the healthy foods, right? The more you can have fiber and healthier foods and, you know, more vegetables during the day, more avocado, healthy fats, healthy fats are a woman's best friend, whether that's a handful of nuts, whether that's almond butter, uh, whether it's avocado, you know, or some coconut oil, it's really, really important that you incorporate some healthy fats into your life. That's going to go a long way in helping your hormones. And then if you need help, hormonal help, get it. Go to your doctor, get bioidenticals. You know, there are so many options now for women. We, we don't have to have menopause be what it was for our mothers, which our grandmothers. I mean, my grandmothers were forced to have hysterectomies when they went into to menopause. That used to be the way that it was done. And, you know, my mother, hormone replacement, you know, leading to all different kinds of cancers um, 
it just doesn't have to be anymore. There's so many different types of estrogens and progesterones that come from plants that your body can easily manage uh, with no side effects that will help you to sleep well, help you to feel better, help you to lose weight, help you to lose the brain fog. Um, so that's a big factor with women and sleep is really making sure that their hormones are balanced and getting the help if you need the help. So uh, just to recap on what you said about sleep, um, find a routine for stress relief. Mm -hmm. And then if you uh, need to contact your physician about any um, discomfort or any menopausal or perimenopausal, because it really starts yeah. in perimenopause, really. Right. Um, yeah, any symptoms for that to really look into um contacting your physician. And, and I'll say this, um, and this is just even from my experience, even talking uh, to some physicians, is you have to find the right physician That's right. when it comes to um, getting help with your hormone balancing, et cetera, et cetera, because all of them are still not on the same page. With that. And, and for that, Sheila, I recommend endocrinologists. I recommend that women don't go to their OBGYNs. They go to their OBGYNs when they want to have a baby or they need birth control. But when they need help, perimenopause or menopause, you need to go see an endocrinologist that really understands your, your thyroids, your, can test your cortisol level, can test your hormone levels, and can talk to you about bioidentical bio hormones. Yeah, and you have to find, mine does not do that. So, ah. yeah, so that's why I just wanted to say, because depending on what your, you know, your physician will say, well, no, we don't do or whatever. Um, but if that's something that you know that you really are interested in, sometimes you have to investigate right. and maybe find the right person. Right. Yeah. So, because right. it's not, sometimes it's not that easy. You, you'd be no, surprised. No, it's true. It's true. I, I yeah. agree with that. Yeah. Women, um, again, it goes back to advocating for ourselves, right? It goes back to showing up for ourselves. Um, you go see a doctor that just wants to put you on the birth control pill for your hot flashes, and you know that that's something that doesn't work for you, you need to say, no, thanks. I'm going to move mm -hmm. on and get another opinion. Right. Um, and really stand up for yourself and don't just say, well, I'm going to do this because it's what my doctor recommends. And then you have all these horrible side effects that, you know, uh, it's no, no, you've got to yeah. show up for you. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, yeah. And that's one of the reasons why I actually do this show is to make sure that people empower themselves about their health. Right. Because um, you you do have to have some background knowledge or some uh, or, or not be afraid to ask questions and get the answers that you need. And if you don't, there are physicians, coaches, people out there, um, or other health professionals that can, you know, kind of help you with the answers. Right. So don't give up. That's right. Basically. Yeah, just, That's right. just don't give up. That's right. So, and in the few minutes that we have left, because we you've talked a little bit um, in between about your program and what you do, um, but can you um, just tell us a little bit about your program? And I put I'm going to put different uh, ways that you can contact Shauna um, on the bottom of the screen. I have the first one up. That's her. Um, her website is that your website your email. your your email right see that's what i'm saying yes yeah, so that's what i have to ask i'm like i know because we have several ways yeah. so that's her email but um can you tell us a little bit about your program sure my program is called irresistibly healthy um it's a 90-day program and basically what we do together is we take your goals, we personalize your goals of what you're looking to accomplish over the 90 days, because it takes 90 days to really create a positive feedback loop in your body for healthier habits. And um, we take your existing habits and we level them up to be able to stack on healthy habits in a very slow, easy way that over time uh, will create success for you. It's a success strategy and make them feel sustainable, make them feel um, that it's very, very doable, it's easy, and it's fun. And we do that not only personally, one-on-one, -on -one, but we also do that in a group as well. Um, because having that group support really helps with motivation and accountability. And it's, it's a very important part of learning and being successful is doing it within a group as well. So, yeah. And, and the information that I put on the bottom of the screen uh, is that how they can connect with you for this program? <laughs> it is. It's how they can set up a free 30-minute consultation with me. 
Very good. I'm oh, more than happy to meet with, with anyone on this show and, and see if we're a good fit for working together and um, kind of hear what your health goals are and hear what your needs are and, and see if, if, you know, it would be mutually beneficial for us to work together. So that's my website, kayahealthcoach.com. And then the backslash connect will take you directly to my calendar. And then you can just, you know, book for free with me. Okay. And then um, also I'm going to put more information up here. Um, so this uh, is if people, and you can explain it, but I know it's for people to get your book, but you can certainly explain um, a little bit about this site. So this is my first book, Powerful Sleep. Um, my book is on Amazon. Both my books are on Amazon. So, you know, they can feel free to download it on Amazon. Um, but I offer the books for free because, you know, I, it's a service I'd like to do. I'd like to be able to have people have free access to my books. So PowerfulSleepBook.com is um, my website where you can go, put in your email address, um, verify that you're a real person and not a scammer robot, and then you'll be able to download the PDF copy of my book. And it's full of sleep tips, sleep habits, things that you can really do to make a difference in your sleep. And, and then in it, I share the story of my father uh, and his battle with Alzheimer's and dementia and, and how lack of sleep played a big part in that and then how we were able to really elongate his life and give him a really beautiful quality of life for many many years while we were battling this disease with him mm -hmm. so um it's really the the story through that so there is hope for people who are, have neurodegenerative diseases in their family and alzheimer's is affects way more women than men yeah. um it's you know 65 percent of alzheimer's patients in the united states are women and part of that is because they don't sleep and so mm -hmm. this book, I think, is really fundamental to helping women troubleshoot their sleep and figure out how to get seven to nine uninterrupted hours at night. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. So um, we're going to wrap this up. We have just a few uh, more minutes, but I just want to make sure that we um, thank Shauna yeah. for coming. Um, it has been wonderful having you here. You have really shared quite a bit of wonderful information um, with our audience and hopefully it will resonate with someone and it will help them to make that one step to live better, to live well. Um, and just remember one step at a time. That's right. That's all you have to do. That's right. Um, yeah. Yeah. And if you can just think of some of the tips that she said, I, as, and as I said, this will actually stream on Facebook live. So, uh, you'll be able to even go back to it because you know, once you're on Facebook, you never leave. <laughs> so even if you see it once, um, you can always go back there and see it again, along with on our streaming networks. So, um, and even on the streaming network, the KP Media TV network, it's, uh, we also have a video on demand channel. Great. So Great. it will also be video on demand if you need to see it. Just a reminder too, if you um, need to contact me, I am the pelvic coach, so my, uh, uh, is my <laughs> my email <laughs> to pelvicoach.com. I also have a um, website where you can go in. So I actually help women reduce and eliminate their bladder leaks. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to raise your hand here, but in your mind, if that hand is raising, then I am the one that you want to contact. Um, so you can actually, my website, the pelvic coach, my email, the pelvic coach, everything is kind of the same. And you can connect with me, too, on uh, Instagram, Facebook, and you can connect with Shauna. I got to get so much information in at the end. I know. I know. But so, Shauna, tell us how they can connect with you quickly. What is your um, handle on uh, Facebook and Instagram? Kaya Health Coach. Kaya Health Coach. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Same, as my, same as my website. Yeah. Excellent. Absolutely. Yeah, excellent. And mine is uh, Living Well with Dr. Sheila. Same Great. as the show. Yeah. So that'll, that way you can find both of us. Yeah. So on that note, everyone, I would like to thank you so much for joining me. I am Dr. Sheila, Sheila Craig Whiteman, the pelvic coach, and this is SCW channel. So thank you so much. And until next time, you all take care and have a wonderful day.